Amazing all sports radio station, AM 610, WIP, Philadelphia. The following program time has been purchased by Rasslin Radio. The opinions and information given on this program may or may not reflect the position of the management of WIP All Sports Radio. 610, WIP, Rasslin Sports Radio, Sports Station. Now it's time to talk wrestling on Philadelphia's All Sports Radio Station. Dial our new Pennsylvania number, 592-0610. From New Jersey, 963-0610. Now, talk wrestling with Joel Goodhart. The Tri-State Wrestling Alliance presents Spring Spectacular 2, Saturday, May 18th, 7.30 p.m. Philadelphia Civic Center, Pennsylvania Hall. Nine great matches in all. A ringmaster bunkhouse battle royal. Come as you are. Bring anything to the ring. Featuring the stars of the TWA. The finals of the TWA Tag Team Tournament. A TWA Heavyweight Title Defense. And then six main events. For the first time in Philadelphia, a special attraction. Jeff Jarrett goes up against Eric Embry. In a barbed wire match, hot stuff Eddie Gilbert takes on Cactus Jack. The fabulous ones come to Philly for the first time. Stan Lane and Steve Kern, managed by Jim Cornette, go up against the heart throbs of Al Perez and Austin Idol. Memphis Mayhem, Jerry the King Lawler, takes on the Honky Tonk Man. Texas Trouble, Dirty Dick Murdoch, up against Terrible Terry Funk. And in the main event, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff takes on Ravishing Rick Rude. Saturday, May 18th, 7.30 p.m., Philadelphia Civic Center, Pennsylvania Hall. 745-8315 for tickets to Spring Spectacular 2, Saturday, May 18th, 7.30 p.m., Philadelphia Civic Center, Pennsylvania Hall. All right, welcome to 610 WIP's Rasslin' Radio. My name is Joel Goodhart. Good morning. The weather out there is horrendous. It's snowing, it's hailing, it's doing all kinds of stuff. But for the next hour, we're going to be talking here, the sport of professional wrestling here on 610 WIP All Sports Radio. And, of course, you know the phone numbers. Give us a call at 592-0610 in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, 963-0610. And if you're driving around on the Bell Atlantic mobile system, it's a free call. Just dial star 610. I don't know why you'd be driving around in this kind of weather. But we're going to be talking about WrestleMania. Of course, WrestleMania is history. WrestleMania 7, for those of you who do not know, uh, Hulk Hogan is now a three-time WWF world champion. And the Nasty Boys came over in about three months' time, got themselves the WWF Tag Team titles. We'll be talking about WrestleMania in a couple of minutes, and we'd like to have you call in and talk about uh, your opinions of WrestleMania, what you thought grading the card from a 1 to a 10. Also, we've got some results from the Tokyo Egg Dome card, the NWA card over in Tokyo the Thursday prior to WrestleMania, and we'll be talking about one of the major results out of that card, the controversy that has arisen between Ric Flair and Fujinami regarding the finish of that match and who in fact is the NWA world champion although or WCW world champion uh, although WCW is still recognizing Ric Flair as the champion some major questions have come up 65,400 people at the Tokyo Egg Dome three and a half million dollar gate kind of puts WrestleMania to shame but we'll be talking about the Tokyo Egg Dome card during the hour uh, also during this upcoming hour hopefully we'll have on the line nature boy Buddy Landell We'll be talking about his upcoming match April 12th at Neshaminy High School, Neshaminy Knockout, uh, when he goes up against Bam Bam Bigelow. And on April 14th, he'll be at the Philadelphia Original Sports Bar taking on J.T. Smith in that re revenge match, if you will. So we'll be talking to Nature Boy Buddy Landell. Uh, also, we'll be talking to some people uh, who are involved in some of the upcoming TWA cards in the area. Uh, this week coming up, the NWA, of course, tonight at the Philadelphia Civic Center. Uh, a big card on hand. A lot of wrestling fans will be down at the Philadelphia Civic Center for Ric Flair going up against Scott Steiner for the World Heavyweight title. Also, Butch Reed against Ron Simmons in a six-man tag. Sting, Lex Luger, and Rick Steiner will be going up against the Horsemen of Barry, Arn, and Sid. Z-Man will be going up against Terrence Taylor. Tommy Rich and Ricky Morton against the Freebirds. Dustin Rhodes going up against Bobby Eaton. Tim Horner against Larry Zbyszko. So we'll be talking about the card coming up at the Civic Center tonight as well. Also in the upcoming week on Wednesday night, March, uh, April 3rd, uh, the NWA will be down in Wildwood. I know we have a lot of listeners down in the Wildwood area. They'll be down at the Wildwood Convention Center. And, of course, Thursday, we'll be having our video bus up to the Meadowlands for the big NWA card, one of the main events up there, Lex Luger going up against Nikita Koloff. First time Nick's been in the area since uh, 
winter challenge too. So again, call in. We want to talk to you about WrestleMania and uh, talk to you about the Tokyo Egg Dome card and all these upcoming events in Pennsylvania. 592-0610, New Jersey 9630610, and on the Beltlandic mobile system, a free call by just dialing star 610. I'll very quickly go down the uh, the results of WrestleMania. There were 14 matches in all. Uh, no particular order here. Hulk Hogan defeating Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, the Ultimate Warrior defeating Randy Savage. Randy Savage now retired. We'll be talking about that match, I'm sure, during the hour. What a great finish to a match. Uh, just a shame that 17,000 fans out in Los Angeles didn't know that Randy Savage and Elizabeth are really married, but we'll be talking about that. The Nasty Boys will be going up against the Hard Foundations. The Nasty Boys were victorious, um, and it just, to me anyway, kind of proves something to me that the town in the NWA is good enough to be able to jump to the WWF in a period of two or three months, go through all the competition, then go on and win the titles, but we'll talk about that. The Rockers defeated Haku and Barbarian. Curry Von Erich defeated Dino Bravo. Davy Boy Smith defeated the Warlord. Jake the Snake Roberts against Rick Martel with Jake being victorious. The Undertaker defeating Jimmy Snuka. Demolition losing to Tenaru and Katow. Valentine against Earthquake. Uh, Earthquake victorious there. Doom went up against Power and Glory. Uh, look at this, I put Doom. I can't, boy, I can't even remember my own writing. The Road Warriors went up against Power and Glory. Two minute match. Didn't take long for that one. Virgil against DiBiase. Virgil winning by countout. Uh, the Mountie. Went up against Tito Santana, and the Mountie was victorious, and the boss man and Kurt Henning went about 10 minutes. Uh, of course, Henning still having the title. 112 minutes of wrestling in a show that went about three and a half hours long. We want to hear your comments about WrestleMania. Uh, I gave the card a five, and let me tell you how I came up with that. The first half of WrestleMania, I thought it was a very decent card. I gave the card an eight up until the intermission. After the intermission, I gave the rest of the card a two, and eight and two is 10 divided by two is five. So that's how I came up with my five. I thought that the card got worse as the night went on. It basically states what I've stated all along, that the talent at the top is not as good as the talent at the bottom. I thought that the uh, Randy Savage Ultimate Warrior match was much better than I thought, going almost 20 minutes. Um, it was nice to see, you know, Justin Tar I, I'm a big person when it comes to keeping track of some matches. Kerry beat Bravo in three minutes. Uh, Mounty beat Santana in one minute. Uh, Rhodes against Power and Glory went two minutes. Valentine Earthquake went three minutes. Undertaker snook a four minutes. I'm not even sure why some of these matches were at WrestleMania, but that's what we want to talk about. 592-0610 in Pennsylvania, New Jersey 9630610, and uh, if you're driving around your mobile system, just star 610. We'll start off in South Philadelphia. Kathy, you're on Wrestling Radio. Hello, Joe. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. In your opinion, who's the best second-generation wrestler and why? Well, who's your favorite? Oh, I love Bret Hart. Okay. You love Bret Hart. Why? Yes. Because he's, he should wrestle good. I don't know. I just think he's good looking, too. Oh, that helps. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good reason. Hey, Cass, grow up, all right? Scott Havertown, or Scott and Haverford. Guy's good looking, therefore he's a great wrestler. I, that's a new one by me. Haverford, how you doing? Hey, Joel. All right. WrestleMania? You think Bret Hart's good looking? Uh, I don't know who he is. Uh. <laughs> WrestleMania? Yeah. Twice. Twice? Anyway. All right, wait. Give it a one to a ten. I didn't even see it. I don't even care. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, let me see well, a couple weeks ago, you were talking about the Freebirds being the champions, and then two weeks earlier, they fought the Steiners, and they lost the belt. Who has the, who has the belt? Steiners have the belt. All right, um, and what happened with uh, Ric Flair? All right, what basically happened with Ric Flair was a typical NWA screw-up finish. The NWA had a match, or WCW, i got to get used to this. The WCW had a match between Ric Flair and Fujinami for the WCW heavyweight title. <clears throat> During the match, the, wet, the match went, from what some reports, 30, 35 minutes long. Excellent match. Obviously, it's going to be on the pay-per-view. But th the bottom line was that the American referee was knocked out. At that time, Fujinami was pinning Flair. The Japanese wrestler came in, one, two, three, and the place just absolutely went crazy when most of the people out there kind of assumed that Fujinami won the belt. At the press conference the day afterwards, when the referee was knocked out, the American referee, he was thrown supposedly knocked out but looking up and Ric Flair was thrown over the top rope by Fujinami. So what has happened is that the American referee has declared that in fact it was a disqualification because Ric Flair was thrown over the top rope since they were wrestling under WCW rules. Of course in Japan they're claiming that they were wrestling under their rules where a, over the top is not a disqualification. Uh, so there's a major question as to where the belt was being held up. WCW currently recognizes Ric Flair as their champion. Uh, obviously, there's some press conferences lined up in the next week or so that will be televised on TBS. It wouldn't surprise me if it was on tonight's television. Uh, but Ric Flair is still the uh, WCW heavyweight champion. My understanding is that they have signed for a rematch on May 19th on their pay-per-view down in St. Petersburg, Florida. 
between Ric Flair and Fujinami, uh, whether it'll be a no disqualification or something along those lines, but there will be a rematch. All right, uh, one last thing. What about the horsemen? Any word? Yeah, the word is that they've basically broken up. In fact, they mentioned it on the uh, Power Hour last week that the horsemen will be together when necessary, but for all intents and purposes, the four of them will be going their separate ways. All right, thanks a lot. All right, we thank you for calling. All right, and you want to talk about something before we take a break here. I got a Michael Rotunda, who was a former, well, a great wrestler. Let's put it that way. Came to the NWA as Mike Rotunda. He was part of this, part of that. Then he became Michael Wall Street. And then he went over to Japan when he left WCW. And, of course, I announced several weeks back that Michael Rotunda was going to the WWF. Well, he showed up in the WWF, but he's not Mike Rotunda. He's not Michael Wall Street. What's his name? Are you ready for this one? Erwin R. Scheister. I-R-S. Think about that during the break. We'll be right back. It doesn't rain, but it pours. Another big story at Sears Brand Central. Hundreds of items on sale. All washers and dryers, all dishwashers, all refrigerators, all VCRs, and practically all TVs. You save five to three hundred bucks. Plus, take another ten percent off all scratch and dent items. It's a story you don't want to sit on because the sale ends Saturday. It's Sears Brand Central, the brands you want at the store you trust. Too bad they don't have umbrellas. You know, the people at J&A Circulation Sales are probably the biggest wrestling fans I know, but they put their money where their mouth is. The people at J&A Circulation Sales are buying blocks of tickets to these cars. They just got 20 tickets to Bar Wars and 30 tickets to Neshaminy High School. Great wrestling fans, great people, and if you're listening to this program and you're looking for some work or you're looking for some upper mobility in your income, j and Circulation Sales are the people to call. The phone number is 781-3981 or 3982. They open at 10 o'clock today. Write that phone number down. A lot of you are people who are listening have been calling in, and slowly but surely, all the people at j Circulation Sales are becoming wrestling fans if they aren't all, already one. If you have the ability to manage teenagers, teenagers, if you have transportation in your own car, if you have the desire to be self-employed, if you want to make some heavy change, six to eight hundred bucks a week, then these are the people to call. We've got people over there now who are making in excess of eight hundred dollars a week. J&A Circulation Sales. John Pistilli and Anthony DeSimone, 781-3981 or 3982. You can give them a call today at 10 o'clock. Talk to John, talk to Anthony, talk about a career move. I'm telling you, there are the people to talk to. J&A Circulation Sales, that phone number again, 215 area code, 781-3981 or 3982. That's J&A Circulation Sales, 781-3981. Our luncheon series continues with Ravishing Rick Rude. That's right, Rick Rude comes to the Square Circle on Saturday, April 6th at the Philly Original Sports Bar, Market Street Live, starting at 12 noon. Come meet and greet Ravishing Rick Rude, one of the top stars in professional wrestling today. 745-8315 for reservations for our luncheon with Ravishing Rick Rude at the Philly Original Sports Bar, Saturday, April 6th, 12 noon. Philly Original Sports Bar, Market Street Live, Sunday, April 14th, 1.30 p.m. All ages are allowed to come to Bar Wars 4. Get your tickets now, 745-8315 for Bar Wars 4. All right, we're back here at 610 WIP's Rasslin Radio. Just a couple more uh, pieces of information from the Tokyo Egg Dome card. The signers won the IWGP World Tag Team title, so they've got championship belts on both sides of the Pacific Ocean. Also, Sting lost to the Great Muta. Bam Bam Bigelow and Big Van Vader defeated Doom. Uh, so more about the card up, obviously, in the weeks and months ahead. April 7th will be the pay-per-view. I'm not sure what matches they're showing. Uh, my understanding is the card went over three hours, yet they're only showing two hours of matches on the pay-per-view, so we'll be interested to see uh, which matches uh, kind of went through the wayside. But 65,000 people three and a half million dollar gate we go out to feasterville michael you're on 610 wip hi joe how you doing i'm cole all right what's going what's going on um wanted to talk about wrestlemania go ahead i thought it was like i guess i could say it's like the best card ever all right from a one to a ten uh 13. okay i thought like uh hulk hogan was wrestling almost better than ever well was that the worst match you ever saw or what no I thought hulk hogan great. against sergeant slaughter proved that two over the hill guys can go for 20 minutes and absolutely do nothing. 
No way. You don't really believe. Tony's over to hell, but Hogan's, Hogan's starting to do better than ever. Excuse me? Hogan's starting to do better than ever. How old are you? 17. Whoa, boy, you're even old for that, too. Okay. That's, uh, you know. So you give the card a 13. Yeah. All right. What did you think of some of the other matches? Uh, Warrior Savage is great. Oh, wasn't that great? Yeah. Wasn't that great to sit on TV and watch a wife and a husband get back together again? Yeah. All right. How about the Nasty Boys against the Hearts? That was okay. Oh, that was okay? Yeah. Okay. What was the best match on the card? Um... Same card, you have all 14 matches to choose from. Probably Warrior Savage. Warrior Savage. That was, they had a lot of good wrestling in it. Oh, yeah. Better than Hogan Slaughter? Yeah. Okay. I agree with you on that one, by the way. Hey, thanks for calling. Thank you. All right, we put you down for a 13. Woo. All right, Don in West Philadelphia. Morning, Joel. How you doing? All right, how you doing? Oh, great. Uh, first, I didn't get a chance to see WrestleMania. Oh, you missed a 13. Ah. Uh, I'm glad I missed it. <laughs> All right, what can we do okay, for you? Okay, uh, I'm uh, I'm an old time wrestling fan. Okay. From like back in the sixties. All right. And I was just wondering, whatever happened to the Kentucky butcher? I have in the foggy. He's obviously living in Kentucky, working in a butcher shop. <laughs> I have no idea. All right, wait, I'm going to run Kentucky butcher. Yeah. All right. One day we're going to do a show of whatever happened to. I keep saying we're going to do that. Uh, I'll keep Dominic DiNucci on the phone here, who, who kind of keeps track of everybody in this business. But wait, we'll check it out. I'll tell you what, if you give me a call at that 745-8315 number, leave a message on my tape, I'll get back to you as soon as I get some information. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, Hey, Joel. take care. Take care. All right, Bye -bye. be good. All right, so John in Center City, you're on 610 WIP. Joel, how's it going? Ah, uh, it's going just great. All right, a 13, huh? A uh, 13. <laughs> Listen, I want to talk about what I think is the best feud in the TWA, Sandman JT. Okay. How far do you think it'll go, and then after the feud, where do you think those two guys are headed? Well, I'll tell you, JT and the Sandman uh, already have signed a match for Nishamani Knockout on April 12th. That's coming up in less than two weeks. Friday night, April 12th, they'll be meeting again. Right. Uh, JT has had his people contact uh, me, as well as some other people from the Tri-State Wrestling Alliance, about getting another shot at uh, Mad Dog DC Drake for the title. Um, and we're, we're currently looking at that in terms of where he ranks and whether he'll get another title shot or not. As far as JT and Sandman are go, both of these guys are rookies out of Ringmasters. Actually, they're not even rookies anymore. They're now in the second year of their, their career. Right. And uh, I don't know where it's going. All I know is every time these two get together, it happens to be one of the more violent matches that the Tri-State has. Well, as you would say, you get your bang for your buck, Joe. Well, I'll tell you, you know, when, when Tri-State first started, Drake and Winters was like the major feud, and that was the violent feud. Then it really became Stetson Hot Body when Drake and, and Winters kind of tag teamed up and people were looking for a violent match with Stetson and Hot Body. Now that that's cooled down a little bit with uh, Stetson being victorious over Hot Body at Winter Challenge 2 in the barbed wire match, now the real hot feud is JT against Sandman. And like I said, that's going to be one of the matches at Nishamani Knockout. So come on down to Nishamani High School in Langhorn on Friday, April 12th. You'll see the two of them go at it again. See you there, Joe. Hey, take care. All right, be good. All right, we'll go out to Cheltenham. We'll talk to Jimmy. You're on 610 WIP. How are you doing today, Mr. All right, how's it going? Pretty good. Um, about Rick Flair, I don't think Tatsuya Fujinami is going to be able to beat him. Who do you think will eventually defeat him for the end of the WCW title? Well, it depends upon who's going to be wrestling. Uh, he's wrestling Scott Steiner tonight. I don't think Scott Steiner's ready to defeat Rick Flair. I think that Rick Flair's major opposition is going to come from the horsemen themselves. I think that Barry Wyndham is going to make a claim. I think Sid Vicious is going to make a claim, and I would love to see Ric Flair go up against Arn Anderson, because I think that would be a great match as well. I just think that now that the Horsemen are kind of going their separate ways, it's only a matter of time before Wyndham and Arn and Vicious demand title shots, and I think of the three, I'd have to go with Barry Wyndham. Now, whether that means he's going to be the next world champ, I don't know. Uh, Flair's got some matches against El Gigante, which are giving him some problems, uh, but Ric Flair is an old pro, and he's not going to lose to anybody that he doesn't want to lose to, and... Uh, I think if he was going to lose to anybody, it'd be someone like a Barry Windham or somebody like that who would give him a great scientific match. So I'll go with Barry Windham. Yeah, now why did Doom wrestle on Japan show? I thought they were supposed to be like fights. Well, they are, but that contract was signed a long time ago. And one thing you learn about wrestling, if you sign a contract, you better, better fulfill it. Um, now, I don't know what happened during the match, whether they were unified as a tag team or whether they really wrestled as two individuals. Uh, but over there, they did sign for a tag team before the split, and they've had to, they had to keep their contract. Okay, just one more thing. Do you think that you'd call off with a defeat Lex Luger for the U.S. title? Uh, nothing would surprise me. Uh, Lex Luger is certainly one who, I think somewhere down the line, Lex Luger is going to realize with the horsemen going their separate ways that if Luger wants to get a title shot against Flair, he's going to have some major competition. 
Uh, I think that I don't think Nikita's going to defeat Luger as much as Luger just might lose it himself. Uh, it would not surprise me to see Nikita Koloff get the belt, uh, but for now, I think on April 4th at, at the uh, Meadowlands will be the first time the two are getting them together. Uh, I don't pick Nikita to win the belt yet, but somewhere down the line, look, Luger has been a four-time world champ, which means he's lost it three times. So he'll lose it a fourth time. Okay. All right, we thank you for calling. Yeah, May 18th. All right, take care. We'll see you down at Spring Spectacular, down at the Philadelphia Civic Center, May 18th. We'll be right back. We're talking wrestling here on 610 WIP. 610 WIP. As American troops arrive home from the Gulf War, HBO presents Whitney Houston in a live concert celebration. America's proudest moment, HBO's most memorable concert event. HBO presents Welcome Home Heroes with Whitney Houston, Sunday, March 31st, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, we're back here at 610 WIP's Rasslin' Radio Last Chance Tickets. We've been talking about them for over two years, and you constantly amaze me. You constantly call these people, wrestling fans are the greatest fans in the world, 1-800-336-TIXX or 609-488-9191. If you're looking for tickets for anything, right now they've got tickets for BBD, sounds like underwear, but BBD, George Thurgood, the Scorpions, the Yes Concert, Baseball is coming up. If you want to go to the Phillies baseball game, it uh, looks like the Flyers don't have any playoffs. You don't have to worry about getting playoff tickets. The Sixers, whatever you're looking for, last chance tickets is the place to go. And all you have to do is dial 1-800-336-TIXX or 609-488-9191. Now, they're not open yet, but they have a tape machine on, so you have to do is call, leave your name and number. They'll get back to you. They'll take care of you. That's what I keep telling you. They'll take care of you. Last chance tickets, one 800 336-TIXX or 609-488-9191. And in just a moment, we'll be talking to Jazz and Jeff from Last Chance Tickets as we give away a pair of front row seats to tonight's Civic Center card. We'll be back in just a moment. That's Last Chance Tickets. It seems that everyone enjoys going to the Meadowlands for an NWA Championship Wrestling card. Well, on Thursday evening, April 4th, the Squared Circle gets its video bus and gear as we head north to the Meadowlands for the WCW NWA card at the Meadowlands. We have ringside seats. That's right, we'll be ringside for the NWA card at the Meadowlands on Thursday, April 4th. Dial 745-8315 for information and reservations. He canceled on us once before, but he's back, and he's promised to be there. Saturday, May 11th, 12 noon, a luncheon with the crazy man, Cactus Jack. That's right, Cactus Jack will finally make it to the squared circle. Saturday, May 11th, 12 noon at the Philly Original Sports Bar, 8th and Market Street in Center City, Philadelphia. He best be there that time. It's Cactus Jack at the squared circle. 745-8315 for crazy man, Cactus Jack. All right, we're back here at 610 WIP's Rasslin Radio in Pennsylvania, 5920610, New Jersey, 9630610, on the Beltlandic mobile system. A free call by just dialing star 610. The snow is still coming down, but it's not sticking, so there won't be any traffic problems tonight going down to the Philadelphia Civic Center. I do want to take this opportunity. I want to thank everyone that came out for the luncheon last Saturday with Bulldog Brower. For those who came out, what a great afternoon it was talking about the good old times and professional wrestling. And also last Saturday night at the Philadelphia Skating Rink, at the Springfield Skating Rink, a great crowd came out. We had a ball down there as well. A lot of the stars of the TWA came out. Those who showed up, I do want to thank them for taking a Saturday night away from their families or what have you to come out to the Springfield Skating Rink. Again, the Squared Circle Wrestling fans are the greatest wrestling fans in the world. And again, many thanks to Bob and Lex Artis from the Springfield Skating Rink for putting that together. The support is certainly very, very much welcome. All right, we're going to go to our conference line right now. We've got Jazz and Jeff on the line from Last Chance Tickets. And Jazz and Jeff, how you doing? Hey, Joel and Jeff. How's Joel and Joel? Joel and Joel. Woo. That's, that's, that's a guy's car. He's a Babe Ruth of wrestling. How um, you doing, All right, how you doing? Good. I want to thank you for uh, everything you've done and uh, the way you've helped all your fans and the way you've helped prom promote Last Chance Tickets. Well, hey, look, I'll tell you something. Uh, when it comes to ticket agencies, before I met you guys, I had dealt with a lot of ticket agencies, but you guys seem to have the, the you got it together. I mean, that's what it's all about. Well, Joe, your fans have been really great, and it's really an honor to try and do something back for everything they've done for us. All right, now, what we did this time, as, as everyone who listens to this radio show knows, the Squared Circle, through cooperation from World Championship Wrestling, gets an excellent block of tickets ringside for the Squared Circle fan club member fans. 
And through cooperation with Last Chance Tickets and World Championship Wrestling, we were able to put aside a pair of front row seats for tonight's card at the Philadelphia Civic Center. And we're going to have Annie, our producer, make a drawing, and we'll pick the winner. We had about 275 people sending cards. Some, one guy sent in 62, <laughs> 62 envelopes. He didn't send, and each one had a little thing typed in in Xerox. It was real neat. Determined, huh? Oh, what can I tell you? All right, Annie's going to make, a, make the drawing right now. Je Jeff, I just want to take this opportunity. I think your support of Rasslin Radio is very much welcome, and you and Fancy Frank just have a great operation over there at Last Chance Tickets and kind of a freebie here. I want to give it, why don't you give out your phone numbers again, have people give you a call, and maybe get a ticket buy out of it. Okay, Joe, the number in uh, Pennsylvania and surrounding is 1-800-336-8499. Anybody's over in Jersey, the number is 609-488-9191. All right, and Annie has put up the winner. The winner is from Pennswalker, New Jersey. Uh, I hope I can, I hope I read the name right here, Chuck. Wigand, uh, she's got it up here on the screen, W-I-E-G-A-N-D, from Collins Avenue in Pennsylvania, New Jersey. If Chuck is listening, you just won yourself a pair of front row seats to the Philadelphia Civic Center tonight for World Championship Wrestling. That's great. Congratulations, Chuck. Now, we got the phone number here. What I'm going to do, I'll put you on hold, and he'll give you the phone number so you can obviously get in touch with these people as well and congratulate them on winning Chuck Wigand, W-I-E-G-A-N-D, Collins Avenue, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Winners tonight for the Philadelphia Civic Joe, Center. Yeah. I also want to thank you for all the great work you've done for helping bring wrestling alive in this area again. Well, thanks, Jeff. I appreciate the compliment. Between you and me, people can get tickets for damn near anything. That's for sure. You got it. Thanks, thank Jeff. Thank you, buddy. Take care. Take care. All right, be good. All right, Chuck Wigan, a winner. A pair of front row seats, and hopefully we'll get last chance tickets to do that again. That was real success. A lot of people writing in, a lot of envelopes. That one guy sent in 60-some envelopes. Absolutely incredible. All right, we go out to Lindenwald. We're going to talk WrestleMania with Don. You're on 610 WIP. Oh, Joel, how, how you, are you? All right, how you... Whoa! Big, this is... <laughs> I, I want to get something straight here. Uh-oh. Wait, wait. Did you give WrestleMania a 13? Not a 13. Okay, what'd well, you give it? Well, I thought I gave it on a scale of 1 to 10. I would have to give it an 8, Joel. Okay. And I, and I thought... Um, I'll tell you, in all honesty, most of the people who called me during the week uh -huh. gave it a 7 or an 8. Yeah, I thought the card, I thought the card had some um, bad points and had some good points. A couple of the matches could have went longer, but then you got to look at the, the length of time that's involved in it. So, therefore, the, a lot of the earlier matches went on a little longer, and as the evening wore on, it, it probably got into a situation where time was a problem. So maybe they... So in other words, what you're saying is the WWF said to these guys, look, I need you to keep it real short? Well, by the Sports Illustrated article, then, um, uh, Joel, that's what I was really calling you about. All right, now, I will, I will tell you this before we get into that. The Sports Illustrated had an article that is in this month's issue regarding Vince McMahon. Uh -huh. I want you to know that I wrote a letter to Sports Illustrated. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll wait to see if, in fact... Um, they print it. If they print it, everyone will know what I wrote. If they didn't print it, then a couple weeks down the line, I'll certainly read it out here on the radio. Well, well, Joe, what I, I think the, the, the writer was trying to say <clears throat> was that how wrestling and Vince McMahon has come within the last 10 to 12 years. Now, granted, the article did state that it was a lot of old-timers, loose and etc., that were pretty upset with Vince McMahon's style, but it pointed out one interesting thing, Joel, Yo. that regardless of what he said and how he promotes entertainment, he's successful. And and if you go by some of his facts that he gives, Joel, I mean, it's just it's just staggering. The All right, guy, now, oh yeah, hold on a second. I don't. I've never said on this radio that I don't think that Vince McMahon is a genius. Okay, I think that Don King is very successful in boxing, but I think he's bad for the sport. All right. But, but, Vince but, McMahon is very successful, but been bad for the sport. But just like, but just like people, we say for years how bad Don King has been for boxers. Do you notice we all go back to see his shows, and it's the same thing with Vince McMahon. The more people say how bad it is and how much he puts too much emphasis on entertainment than does sports, by his own admission, he said that. But Joe, I think. That really is the way of, of the 90s, that people want to see entertainment along with the rest of them. They want to feel as though that they can identify with a specific character. All right, then whereas the wait, then the ago, the Joe, whereas years ago, me and you, we weren't concerned with, with the, the wrestler's uh, a hype and his, his entertainment status. We were concerned with wrestling, but if you're looking in today's market, Number one, to be able to be successful in the wrestling world, 
You're going to have to have some type of uh, 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 gimmick with you. You're going to have to have some type of plot to get people interested in you. Erwin so R. Scheister makes huh? Erwin R. Scheister makes Mike Rotunda a better wrestler? Well, now I'm not saying a the better The Undertaker wrestler. makes me, Mark Callis, a better wrestler? I'm, I'm not saying it makes them a better wrestler. Dom, you and I have a major disagreement. The yeah, I, disagreement I, that I have is I don't care about the gimmick. When the match starts, they better wrestle. Well, Curry so Von Erich is a great wrestler, yes, he is, has to go Joe. three minutes against Dino Bravo, Undertaker against Snooker went four minutes. I know but that, Joe. Come on, let, let's Joe, be serious for one second. The bottom line here is what you're saying, and you're agreeing with Vince McMahon in that article, Sports Illustrator writes an article, and I'm telling you that that guy's on a WWF payroll. The bottom line is there's a quote from Vince McMahon that says there was too much sport in the sport. Wait a minute. Don't give me Joe, any... Joe, somebody could, somebody could get, to, get the idea that you are uh, uh, um, some way affiliated with WCW. Yeah, meanwhile, that's why I go on the radio and blast the signers and sting to hell or high water. I come on the radio, I promote a card in the same building they run in. The bottom line here is, okay, and it still comes down to the bottom line. Yeah. Vince McMahon publicly states the sport is fake. <coughs> then he goes on and in Sports Illustrated says there was too much sport in the sport. Well, 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 Joe. And then admits that if his father knew what he was doing, his father would have never sold him the stock. Tom, sure. I've had enough talk about Vince McMahon. We'll talk about the Sports Illustrated letter later on. We go to Salem, New Jersey. James, you're on Rasslin' Radio. Thanks a lot, Joe. I'd like to agree with you 100%. No, no, don't agree. Call. It's not good. You're not allowed to agree with me 100%. 99% maybe. All right, 99%. Okay. But like you say about like WrestleMania 7? Yeah. Do you think Randy Savage is really going to retire? Uh, my understanding is, and I mentioned this on the radio four or five weeks ago, uh, my understanding is that he's been on the road for about five years. He and Elizabeth are going to take some time off on vacation. He's not retiring. Uh, thanks, Scott. And You're like, welcome. He's my favorite wrestler. And like, why does the WWF, like, um, like, see what they just did with the Iron Sheik? Well, wait, wait, you ready for this one? Now he's Colonel Mustafa. Yeah. All right, it. now, who do you think he's wrestling? This is great. They've already announced the card for the Cap Center on April 20th, right. okay, which is in the evening. The Spectrum is in the afternoon. Now, I don't know what the Spectrum card is. I'm going to assume it's, it's the... Um, right, um, Hogan Slaughter is the main event. Okay, well, who do you think... Now, get this one now. Who do you think Colonel Mustafa or the Iron Sheik is going up against in the Cap Center? Hulk Hogan. No. No? Hacksaw Jim Duggan. <laughs> now, aren't these the two that cause all the problems traveling together, getting caught on the Garden State Parkway? Yeah. The Iron Sheik and Duggan are, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Oh, God. What do you think of Erwin R. Scheister? <laughs> That's, That's what a I... big joke. Isn't that incredible? Hey, we thank you for calling. All right, no problem. All right, take care. No and we're going to now go down to Florida, down in the sun and fun state, and we're going to be talking to Nature Boy Buddy Landell. Hey, Buddy, welcome to 610 WIP. What's happening, Joe? It sounds like you got it all, man. Well, we're trying up here. How you doing? Well, hey, I'm just hanging and banging, man. I'm doing great. I think uh, that Vince McMahon and Dusty Rhodes, I think they're all missing the boat by, uh, by uh, Vince not calling the icing on the cake and uh, uh, Dusty Rhodes letting me go. Or so, let me let me clarify everything. The letter that I got through the mail uh, said that I was suspended until further notice. And, uh, you know, so... I, hey, think they're all, I think they're all missing the boat. Hey, I want you to know something. My, my producer ain't missing the boat. She just put up on the screen, he sounds so cute, I like his accent. She, she likes my what? She likes Ac your accent. Oh, I thought it, she said she likes something else. <laughs> my accent. All right. Yeah, you know what? I've lived in Florida for a couple of years, but I'm from Tennessee. I just can't shake this southern draw. I'm southern as a, as a slab of bacon. <laughs> Hey, listen, you're coming up to Philadelphia. If WCW and, and the other organizations don't use you, I think the best independents will. Uh, and, you're exactly right. And the Tri-State Wrestling Alliance is bringing Nature Boy Buddy Lindell back to the TWA. April 12th, that in the Chamonix Knockout at the Chamonix High School in Langhorne, Pennsylvania. You're going up against Nature Boy Buddy Landell. Uh, you're going up against... You're going up against Bam Bam Bigelow. Uh, no, 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 you're exactly right. I fight my conscience every morning when I get up. <laughs> oh, God, it's a good morning. Anyway, you're going up against Bam Bam Bigelow. Have you ever wrestled with him before? Yeah, I had some, uh, as a matter of fact, I had some of these first matches with him down in Memphis, Tennessee, when he, when he fir first got out of prison. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, listen, I mean, this is the strongest guy that I've ever been grabbed by in my whole life. I mean, this guy scared me, and I'm fearless. Well, I'll tell you, this match against Bam Bam Bigelow, which is signed and the contract is open so that if there is nothing that definitely happens in this match, somewhere down the line, the two of you might meet again. Yeah. But on April 13th, 
The following day on Saturday afternoon at 12 noon at the Philly Sports Bar, you have your opportunity of coming to one of our squared circle luncheons yeah. and getting to meet the best wrestling fans in the world. Hey, it's always a pleasure. You know, it's always... Every time I come up there and wrestle, it always throws my timing off because everybody's going, Yay, yeah, buddy Landell, all right, come on, kick his butt. Uh. I go back to the dressing room, I go, Dirty, man, I wanted them to hate me so bad, but they love me. I can't stand it, man. It throws my timing off. Well, you know, I tell And then you got guys like Z-Man comes back, and he's throwing his stuff up against the wall. He goes, They've actually booed me. I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell the wrestling fans up here, I mean, Philadelphia's always been known as a bad guy's town. I love and, it. And, you know, they cheer the bad guys and boo the good guys. But I've always told them it kind of messes things up a little bit. Yeah. Well, you know what it is? It's, 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 uh, I, I'm different from other wrestlers. I, I like to, uh, you know, I, I'm, uh, I, I think that I'm a great wrestler, and uh, I, I give the, the people pay a lot of money to see the matches. And like, like you said, when, when these guys go three or four minutes and they're supposed to, and they're and, and Vince McMahon and, and uh, Ted Turner's paying them all this money, it's uh, guys like me that has to go in there and, and and uh, pull, the, pull the slack up. And I like to give the people their money's worth. If it's 15 minutes, 20, 30, whatever it is, I'm, I'm an artist. I can go in and I can make the crowd laugh, cry, spit. I, I can make them love, hate me. I'm an artist and I mold the crowd to what I want to do. These other guys have missed the boat all these years. That's why when guys, people see me wrestle on TV, I always use the camera. Those cameramen love me because, you know, I make their job easy. These other guys are on there trying to wrestle their brains off, and I'm just trying to find a corner to get a camera. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's, that's the difference. But that's 13 years in the business, and and uh, it goes back to the fact you either have it or you don't have it. There's no uh, there's there's no learning it after years. The Steiners will never have it. They guys are scared to wrestle. And they're scared they're going to get hurt. And it's it. You know, this business isn't about dropping somebody on their head and uh, and uh, crippling them. And, uh, you know, it's business is about, you know, going out there and, uh, and wrestling, having fun, making money, and then giving the people what they want to see so they'll come back. Now, on April 14th, to complete the weekend, Sunday afternoon at Bar Wars 4 here at the Philly Original Sports Bar down at 8th and Market Street, we've got this revenge match between you and J.T. Smith. Yeah, I believe I'm going to have to put up a bit. Well... See, if I slap the hair lip on a normal man, it'd be a hair lip, but I'm going to have to slap a major hair lip on this kid. <laughs> you know, I was up there the last time. He, he got lucky. Well, he had two or three matches, and the kid pinned me. You know, hey, was, I had a temper, but you know for a fact that I did have the flu that night. I think I had a temperature of about 160. I don't know what the deal was. 160? Yeah, well, I was a walking corpse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying, trying to telegraph to you. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> hey, I'm going to have a blast. I'm going to come up here and beat Big O. Come the next day and beat, you know, meet the greatest wrestling fans in the world. Give them the insights on what's going on with the nature boy, Buddy Landell, and uh, all of that kind of good crap. And uh, then the next day, I'll slide down and, meet, and uh, beat the JT kid and then uh, come on back down and bask in the sun. Boy, Nature Boy, Buddy Landell, it's been a pleasure having you on. I've got it all figured out, it sounds like, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, you got your act together. Uh, well, you know, I just think, hey, listen, uh, you know, I think uh, this is the greatest sport in the world. I think that, you know, I, I've been my own worst enemy. You know, I, you know, I, I got suspended for blowing snot on a girl in a bar. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, my, my, ring wor my, my ring talent is exemplary and... Uh, you know, I think everybody's missing the boat by not having Buddy Landell. I told, uh, you know, Magnum T.A. Terry Allen, which is Dusty Rhodes' assistant booker, I told him, I said, hey, listen, I've been watching the show since I've been off. I said, uh, you know, you're missing the icing on the cake. I said, he's sitting out here in Florida. <laughs> but anyway, I've, I've started two or three different businesses and stuff, and uh, yeah, I don't know, before long, uh, Nature Boy Buddy Landell might not have to wrestle no more except for guys like Joel Goodhart in the squared circle, and which would be a pleasure to me. And uh, right now I'm not hurting. I'm just having a good time playing with my little kids. And uh, so, you know, it's... That's Sounds cool. like Nature Boy Buddy Lindell's got his act together. Hey, I'm looking forward to getting, getting, getting away from the old lady and the kids for a couple days and coming up to Philadelphia for three days. Hey, we look forward to seeing you April 12th at Chamonix Knockout, Langhorn, Pennsylvania. April 13th, a luncheon with Buddy Landell at the Philly Original Sports Bar at 12 noon. And on Sunday, April 14th, back to the sports bar and his rematch with J.T. Smith. Nature Boy, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Hey, let me holler at my, man, uh, my main man, Skid Row, Snake, man, if you can hear me, man. Be there. See ya. Bye. Take care. It's Nature Boy, Buddy Landell. We'll be right back here on 610 WIP. 610 WIP. Ah, there's nothing like the coming of spring. It's a time for love. I want you to go out there and tear them apart. And poetry. We don't need your sh around here, you... 
It's a time for hummingbirds. It's a time when nations from all over the world come together. In other words, spring is the time for World League football. Teams from Germany, England, Canada, Spain, and the United States compete in some of the best football the world has to offer. Spring will never be the same again. The World League. It's a whole new ballgame live on USA Network. Tonight at 8, the Raleigh-Durham Skyhawks versus the Orlando Thunder. You're looking for the best in wrestling gifts? Pete's Place, 462-4215. If you're looking for, I don't know, wrestling photos, wrestling posters, if you're looking for your favorite wrestler on a t-shirt or a hat or a puzzle. I mean, this guy's got puzzles of your favorite wrestler. Takes a photo, puts it onto a puzzle, got yourself a puzzle. 462 4215 is the phone number for Pete's Place. They're located in South Philadelphia. The guy's just a great guy. He's sitting by the phone. He's waiting for you to call him. 462-4215. Tonight he'll be at the Philadelphia Civic Center. He does a lot of business down there. A lot of people know where he sits. They come up and they buy pictures from him directly at the match. It's 462-4215. He's the guy to talk to. And uh, last Saturday at Bulldog Brower's lunch, and Pete was just sitting in his glory watching one of the old-timers in action. 462 4215, one of the biggest wrestling fans in the Philadelphia market, is going legit. 462-4215. Mark your calendars now. Friday, May 17th, with our buses leaving at 3 p.m., a very special video bus. As we head south to Washington, D.C., for the NWA card at the National Guard Armory. However, after the card, before we come back to Philadelphia, we'll go to Baltimore, to Sabatino's in Little Italy, and have a birthday party for the number one manager in the Tri-State Wrestling Alliance. Her name is Woman. That's right, Woman will be in attendance for her birthday party at Sabatino's in Baltimore. And our video bus will take us to Washington, to Baltimore, and back to Philadelphia. This bus is limited.